Framed Through Doors and Windows is the sixth contest of the Better Photography Weekly Challenge. Winners stand to receive exciting prizes on behalf of our gifting partner, Digitech. The smartphone category winner will receive a Digitech Gimbal 005 worth 10,995 rupees. It is a sturdy 3-axis handheld gimbal that comes with app-based features and numerous functions that can enhance the quality of your videos. The DSLR category winner will receive a Digitech Tripod DTR 500PH worth 4,995 rupees. It is a lightweight tripod meant for professionals and is suitable to use with DSLRs and small camcorders. Framed Through Doors and Windows is our sixth contest of the Better Photography Weekly Challenge and our mentor judge for this is Nitesh Mohanty, a visual artist who works at the fluid intersection of arts, culture, media, education and self-reflection. His theoretical interests are also wide, often inquiring about the roots and fundamentals of art history, storytelling and philosophy. He is currently heading the Crafting Creative Communication program at MICA, where he shares the relationship between art, design, photography and cinema through a course called Ways of Seeing. Nitesh, over to you. Hi, Tanvi. Hi, uh, everyone. It's a great opportunity to be here today to be able to share my world and how I see it through my photography lens. But I thought it'd be interesting for us to look at the context, not uh, just from the generic understanding of how we look at windows and doors, but broaden our perspective to a more philosophical inquiry. So Tanvi, I'm just going to share the screen and we will take it over from there. So uh, what I'm going to do is over the next um, few minutes is welcome you to my world and how I see things so that it will give you a way of reevaluating how you want to look and understand this contest and see how you want to participate in it, not just from a very um, direct approach, but a deeper inquiry. So for me, um, and I, when I open a session to my students, I always use this uh, beautiful quote by Rudin Sims Bishop. She's an educator like me. She's a teacher at Ohio State University. And she says art is the window to man's soul. Without it, he would never be able to see beyond his immediate world, nor could the world see the man within. But art is sometimes like windows, offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. These windows are also sliding glass doors. We only have to walk through in imagination to become part of whatever world has been created and recreated by artists. However, when lighting conditions are just right, a window can also be a mirror. Art transforms the human experience and reflects it back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as a part of a larger human experience. Understanding art then becomes a means of self-affirmation and we often seek their mirrors in art. I, I, I constantly, um, while evaluating this idea, I go back to my fine art education and three artists have deeply influenced me in how I look at my surroundings, my, my realm, my landscape, and they are Andrew Wyatt, Willem Hammershoy and Edward Hopper. So what I would like to do is take them, uh, take, take, uh, take you guys uh, through their work. And so you get an understanding of how they have inspired and influenced my gaze, my lens, and my photography. So if you look at Andrew Wyatt's work, Andrew Wyatt is an American photographer who largely spent time between Pennsylvania and Maine. And Maine uh, was a rustic surrounding, which was his summer house. And he would often go there in seeking solitude, silence, uh, moving away from uh, urban city life. And what he captured there were landscapes which were kind of left out without the occupied space of humanity. I think what he was trying to do is he was writing the history of unspoken emo emotions through these dry, desolated landscapes and then understanding how he imagines his world to be and what lies outside of that world. So if you look at his paintings, the palette was very desaturated, very 
based in summer colors and sometimes there was this very bright spark in his paintings which brought in a certain kind of a vivid joy into his gloomy and sad saturated paintings i think i think what we also are trying to look here is an artist's ability to traverse from something that is desolated to something that is hopeful i particularly like this painting a lot which is called love in the afternoon where you look at the window and and the artist's ability and the complete disregard to having the window occupy the complete frame because he wants to offer enough weightage and love to what lies outside that window so if you look at his paintings he's using doors and windows very strategically and with a sense of melancholia with a sense of deep love intimacy and the very sheer nature of lyrical landscapes that he's been able to kind of capture through his paintings so andrew bets paintings become very essential as a study when if you are wanting to look at windows and doors as an inspiration he has a large vista of work but i think please go back and look at more of his paintings to understand how he's been able to traverse from looking at just landscapes but also looking at them through windows and doors the next artist that i want to kind of talk about is willem hammershoi willem hammershoi is a danish painter he lived around the late 1800s and the early 1900s and he traversed between copenhagen in denmark and london and being an artist who had studied the classical realistic style of painting he was also someone who was not very keen in giving into bright colors and very happy paintings of of that of that time instead he was looking to build a certain kind of a tension a mystery a sense of melancholia in his paintings now most of his paintings have this very beautiful understanding of architectural space which largely were his studio and his house in copenhagen and london and what he has done with his paintings is not just given us a way to look at space but to also see how light interacts with space how everything then starts illuminating in different forms and different ways and start evoking a different sense of what that space could have been with or without light so when we are looking at windows and doors we don't or we can't disregard the play of light within that which is essential to any art form say painting photography cinema but i think if but if you look at light as not just just as a physical source of light but something very poetic something that is magical something that can transform a very ordinary moment i think that is something that you need to borrow from hamashoi's paintings now imagine this room which without that window without this beautiful muslin curtains which he's been able to kind of present through his textural nuance it would have been a very dead painting so also for him placing his subjects alongside the windows and the doors is very essential so you see the the figure is placed in a very strategic part of the painting next to the door where we know there is another door which is leading there multiple mazes that he's creating is inviting us to participate in his through layered way of presenting which could be called rooms within rooms so i think it 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 also challenges us as viewer to try and understand and look at the painting in layers and not just in a solitary static form of information that is being conveyed through the painting so i think the sense of ambiguity that windows and doors can bring into your uh, inquiry is very fascinating for me and that's what you should be looking at rather than just looking at a window as a window or door as a door rather than looking at what lies beyond the window or what is outside of that door and i think that's when we starting to you know understand it beyond just to these very generic objects architectural objects of our homes the next artist that who has actually become the 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 most famous artist of the quarantine times is edward hopper he's been largely spoken about because what he painted in america during the pop art movement now has become our reality strangely edward hopper was this very lonely man he was not seeking companionship and that's what kind of also made him inquire into the urban american life and the alienation that people were facing in america at that point of time in the 50s 
and and what he brought about in his paintings were that kind of sense of gloom that the sense of desolation the isolation the emptiness the void that people were feeling and he brought in that as a very strong undercurrent and an, uh, an underlying factor within all his paintings this is a very famous painting of his uh, called night hawks uh, which apparently is inspired one of the short stories uh, by uh, Ernest Hemingway, that's what I've read, and that story was called The Killers. And Hopper, at some point of time, was contemplating should he call it The Killers, but later on he wanted to understand and convey the predatory nature of night rather than the loneliness. I think the moment you look at this painting, you think, oh, these are all about lonely people, but I think he also wanted to bring in that sense of uh, decay and, and, and a sense of danger into this painting what could happen after this i think when we are creating art when we are creating photographs we are so fixated with the moment that we forget that there is a moment before and after that moment which we're trying to hold through our camera or through the canvas and i think hopper was always inviting us to look at these possibilities and this particular painting which i love is called office in a small city painted in 1953 now who could have told that hopper had seen how the COVID-19 would pan out and how we will be entrapped in our little offices, in our little homes and houses. And we would have to look outside seeking hope or seeking some kind of a certainty. Because I think as creative people, we are always seeking a sense of control in our art. What am I going to do next? What is going to be my project after this? But I think the COVID-19 scenario has thrown all of us into this whole void of uncertainty and hope was some way prophetic in his paintings when he kind of depicted all of that we are living in, in, in his time and through his painting. This particularly is one of my most favorite paintings. It's called The Night Window. Now there are a few themes that I want to touch upon because perhaps this is going to pan out later on when you're contemplating what kind of imagery that you will be making for this contest. So if you look at this painting very clearly, there are a few themes that emerge, which is the night in the city, it is um, a modern life. It has a very definitive cinematic language of drama, which almost leads uh, itself to a Hitchcockian way of what could be happening there. So what? So even photography, we are always seeking that, that decisive moment, but we are also, uh, we also have this opportunity to bring in ambiguity. Now, when you see that woman couching, we don't know what she's couching and what she's doing, what is ahead of her, what is around her. So in, in this very beautiful triptych kind of a form, uh, Hopper has invited us to investigate and inquire into a moment in a very voyeuristic manner, which later on you can see how Hitchcock used it in this film, Rare uh, Window. And I think it's interesting that what we create in life also gets imitated in art and what we create in art exemplifies itself in our, in, in our lives in a very beautiful and distinct way. So moving on, I want to talk about a filmmaker who had a very strong influence uh, in my life. And uh, that's the Iranian filmmaker Abbas Kiarostami. Now this quote of Kiarostami has always stayed with me. I've often noticed that we are not able to look at what is in front of us unless it's inside a frame. Now, this can be such a simple line for anyone, but if you read and reread this line, I think Kiarostami is talking about the beautiful way of how to hold things within everything that is up for grabs. I've always been fascinated with how uh, Abbas has been able to give us our understanding of Iranian culture through his cinema, but his last film, 24 frames, he does something so magically, which is about picking up 24 of his still photographs and creating a, a, a movement, a way of floating imagination and bringing them to life. So you all have to see this film to be able to understand what this man was trying to do with his understanding of space and how the frame within a frame can idea can get transcended in a very poetic way to for us to imagine of how we overlook these um this spaces called windows in front of us because at the end of the day it's just windows giving us something to look outside but i think what uh, abbas was trying to do with 24 frames is bring us um to a certain kind of awareness of how 
um, the idea can just remain oblivious to us till we don't see it within a frame or it can be lost or it can be chaotic or it can be crowded but the moment you hold it within a frame there is a story that you're telling yeah moving on from uh, artists to filmmakers i want to talk about this uh, photographer who had a deep influence in how i make images and how i see the world and and i'm sure he's not unfamiliar to a whole lot of you and but this quote by Saul Leiter a window covered with raindrops interests me more than a photograph of a famous person. Now, it just kind of, when I discovered Saul Leiter, more than the color, which kind of, kind of came to me as a very definitive um, form of texture that he was throwing into his images, for me, uh, what was most fascinating was the way he used, again, the ideas of windows in New York. Being a street photographer, he was not interested in capturing anything but the magic of, of a very surrealistic kind of an image, almost like collages and expressionist paintings coming together into form of photograph. I would really urge you to look at Saul Leiter's photographs to be able to understand what I'm trying to say. I'm consciously not showing you his work because I want his world to, to reveal itself to you in a very intimate way. So please look up uh, Saul's work to understand how he can be a very strong influencing factor of how we look at windows as canvases. I want to talk about three uh, photographers who I follow on Instagram, who also have allowed me to dwell deeper into the idea of windows and doors. And they are Lisa Sorghini from Australia, Menti Jami, who is a very dear friend and photographer from Nagaland who also shoots in Delhi. And Laura Markabrescu, who's an artist or photographer from Poland. Now, I just want to take you uh, through the work of these three photographers, these three female photographers who I really admire and see what kind of sensibilities you can borrow from them. Uh, Lisa has been photographing mothers to be or pregnant mothers or mothers after childbirth for a very long time. Recently, after the COVID-19, when we were all had to be quarantined and we were under the lockdown, she, she turned her lens uh, into uh, an idea of seeing mothers growing up with the children stuck behind glass doors and glass houses. And, 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 and she started inquiring into this idea that she was working on through, a, through this, this, this form or this physical, physical uh, template of the window. Now, if you read, um, I think if you go and go on to her Instagram profile and read and start seeing what she's been documenting and how she's been looking at isolation in a very interesting way, it'll just open your understanding also. I want to touch upon this photograph by Menti Jamir. Um, Menti is a photographer who traverses between Nagaland and Delhi. And I love this uh, photograph that she has taken. And she has recently posted. And I love what she says about it. How do we ever, ever let go or acknowledge a loss? Is there a time period to grieve? How do we know you're not grieving anymore? Are we supposed to dissolve in rain or become? acknowledging a loss. I think it's beautiful for I, for what I understand. It's a photograph from her hometown in Nagaland and now she's stuck in Delhi and she can't leave the capital and go back to her home. So this photograph fills in with a sense of grief, of loss, of longing, of melancholia. Very similarly of how you see in, in Edward Wyatt's paintings or even the paintings of Hamashoy that I was talking about earlier and how man is constantly negotiating and having conversation with nature, no matter how much we become uh, intrinsically connected to our man-made world. I think our, our relationship with nature, our conversations, our poetry with nature will constantly be something that we'll have to engage with. And that's what Menti brings about very beautifully. Please go and look at her profile to see how she has also been able to broaden her understanding of space, time, through this, this idea called window and door, which appears sporadically within her field. I also want to talk about 
Laura's work, which is again very similarly, is an ode, is a homage to Hamashoi's paintings. Now, if you go and read up about Laura, she is a photographer from Poland who largely has been creating works inspired from fantasy. So there are these very magic, realistic moments that she recreates with photography. But her recent series, uh, Anatomy of Melancholy, is a series of self portraits that she has been creating, photographing herself stuck inside the house looking outside through the window with seeking some kind of a hope or some kind of a rescue out of the situation that we are stuck in. So please look at these three uh, photographers and you will understand how they've been also been able to kind of create magic through very generic ideas called windows and doors. So moving on, I want to show you some work of my own. Um, this is a book that is in making, in fact, it has got printed and it's been waiting to be bound so that it can see the light of the day. But thanks to the lockdown, it's lying within the printer's end. This book is titled Nowhere and it chronicles um, almost six to eight years of my journey with my wife, Dia, who was ailing from brain tumor and she passed away in 2018. Now, Nowhere became like a study of space, of time, of feelings that had no names, of emotions that were sometimes devoid of color or sometimes were painted with hues that had no names as as definitive um, feelings that one was you know uh, being evoked so these are photographs uh, which which are from my house uh, where we were living and uh, Dia would often sit by the window and and wait what was she waiting for? We don't know, and we will never know. She was waiting for a beautiful day. She was waiting for happiness. She was waiting for joy. She was waiting for hope. And there were moments which were uh, completely seeped in despair and agony and uncertainty. So uh, I, was, I was just trying to hold uh, everything that was ephemeral, that was fleeting, that was, that was so incomprehensible. And in doing so, photography came to my rescue. And, and if you look at the photographs that I'm sharing, subconsciously a whole lot of them are through windows by the doors and uh, the windows of the hospital and the home. And this, this, whole, this whole uncertainty of where do we belong is, is what inspired the title. I think sometimes we oscillate in our nowheres. We don't have definitive understanding of time and space and where we are and who we are and what we are doing in these moments and that give birth to the idea called nowhere so if you if you if you have been paying attention and you've been listening to me if you look at all the painters that i shared and the work of abbas kiarostami sol meter and the few photographers that i've been following on instagram who i shared they all have influenced me in some way to look at my my own world, my surrounding, my, my environment, and how within that, the door or the window becomes just a way to navigate through everything, your inner landscapes and your outer landscapes. So that's what I wanted to leave you with. But before I um, sign off, I just wanted to leave nuggets of thoughts with you, which will help you, you know, go back and reassimilate your ideas of how you want to photograph and what you want to photograph, or if you want to also pick something from your existing photographs. What should your edit uh, be guiding you towards? So, so what, what, if, you, if you're framing things around windows and doors, so let's understand that windows and doors are more than just architectural detail. They are part of our homes. They are made in brick and mortar and they are part of uh, our space which we occupy, but they are just, just so much more than architectural details. They offer us a sense of shape. Now, if, if, if we are living in these boxes, uh, doors and windows also break those boxes. They break the boxes in, in dividing and in certain kind of juxtapositions of our interior world and our exterior world. When you sit outside uh, your balcony and look beyond, you're already in the exterior world. But when you're, in your, inside your bedroom or your living room and you're gazing to the world that lies outside the window, you are, you are trying to touch and connect and communicate with the exterior world. 
and 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 that's why for you to it's important for you to understand these these relationships of private and public so everything that happens inside is private but we are also as artists as photographers as filmmakers as poets we are also re revealing certain facets of our private life and making it public so if you have to understand art and photography there is a lot that is held within the 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 frame the canvas but a whole lot of it is also left outside of it so i think you also should be interested in those aspects what are you trying to reveal and how much of it is going to say something about what are you concealing so i have been very fascinated by this term called inner landscape which two of my favorite artists have spoken about one is mark rothko and one is raza closer home and raza and rothko both have been trying to communicate their inner landscape through their paintings and why while creating those paintings they are making their their inner emotions and feelings and sentiments are part of the outward landscape which is us which is the onlooker which is the person in the gallery with someone viewing the painting he becomes the part of the outer landscape so i think doors and windows become uh, more than just architectural detail they are metaphor for hope they are signs and symbols for change we are seeking something that's why we are gazing into the unknown so i think there are so many layers attached to just to these constructs called windows and doors and i hope this presentation will help you understand more about a contest and not just look at it as a contest but look at it as a, a introspection a query and then go about making your images i also thought it'll be nice if i can leave you with some more references to look at so i've just listed out some more paintings by some more artists and and i just don't want you to go and look at those paintings try and read about them so you understand that what is being trying to convey and what we are being conveyed through those work of art so please look at the work of rene magritte and cali botte and dali and rob and so you'll understand what these artists were trying to say and one article that i would suggest you to read is um uh, is is with an american cinematography magazine and it's called from my window which talks about the late work of andre kurtz and joseph sudek and these two photographers i discovered through better photography so i must thank conchita fernandez whose articles and features helped me discover these two amazing photographers and it'll be a pity to call them a photographer because they are artists in true sense and and it's a tragic how both of them lost their lives to war but uh, but eventually they left behind a body of work that needs to be looked at celebrated rejoiced so please read this article which will also help you how they used the window as almost like a beautiful canvas around which they they put their stories for us to read and revel so thank you thank you so much